How to build team track models, paper shipping container models. Bob Johnson with PK and W Railroad coming at you with another video. This time a how-to video about how I make team tracks paper shipping container models. This will be a step-by-step -step approach and I'll follow this up with another video about how I make the Ditchcom designs, containers, and how I stiffen up their uh, nine stacks of uh, shipping containers. So here's a picture of uh, how the models come on the sheet, printed on the sheet. As you can see, you have a, on the right hand side of the sheet, you have, or the bottom of the sheet, based on the orientation on this video. You've got texture for the bottom of the container and the top of the container. This is just going to be paper that's going to be wrapped around mat board later. Above that, you have a piece that has to be laminated onto mat board substrate, and that is the texture for the sides that's just going to be laminated straight onto the mat board. And then also the mat board that's going to be the substrate for the top and the bottom of the container. The ends of the container and a um, substrate for those ends are included on another sheet. Now the sheet says that the ends, that there's two ends for use on the 20 and 40 foot containers and another set of ends that's to be used for the 45 and the 50 foot container. I really don't see any difference at all between those two end prints. Maybe the data is a little different, but it's not really legible, at least on my print. So here you see the texture. These are the pieces that are, that are going to be paper and going to be wrapped around a substrate. They've been cut out. Uh, next, you see the texture that's going to be laminated onto substrate uh, right away. And um, you notice I cut a little bit around the, I, I leave a little border before I laminate him. So that then when I cut them out, uh, then I can then cut them out. I don't have to be trying to cut really close to an already trimmed piece. I can just cut off a little bit of the paper that's been laminated on there. And you see the next shot is um, a picture of the laminated pieces that are laminated together. And then here you see I'm waiting them to let them dry. I had a lot of trouble with the glue sticks and getting this lamination to work. And so on this go round, I used gel glue around the perimeter and on all the joints where I knew I was going to have to be cutting after the lamination process. I did use glue stick in the center. That worked perfectly. Um, here you see I've cut out the outside edges of the laminated pieces. And on the next picture you see I've cut out all of the individual pieces that were laminated on the mat board. It's probably obvious from the picture but I'm using black mat board. I got some black mat board specifically for this project because I thought it would give a kind of a darker look and um, it did. I, I think it looks fine. Now here you see I have now laminated the uh, substrates to the previously cut out texture pieces so the ends now have mat board laminated to them and the top and the bottom also have lamp have mat board laminated to them. Uh, it takes a little bit of fiddling to get these positioned just right, just take your time. Um, and then here you see I weighted these in order to let them dry. I stacked them on top of each other and then put weights on top in order to let them dry. Um, here you see I'm taking, uh, I'm taking my um, artist felt tip marker and I'm darkening the edges of the paper that's been laminated to the substrate for the sides of the container. Check out my other video on getting started in paper model making where I talk about uh, these markers and how to use them. Next is a movie of how I wrap the pieces. I've laminated the substrate to the texture but we now need to fold the tabs in and wrap it. And so what I do is I run a bead of glue along that inside edge where I'm going to wrap it. Then I use the surface of my workbench to make the fold so that I'm sure I'm getting an even amount of pressure and trying to get it as even as possible. 
on that edge as I wrap it around. The excess glue kind of pushes out and fills in and glues the, the entire tab to the back of the laminated piece. I think this is really important because if there's a flaw with these team track models, it's after you put them together, there's a possibility that the edge of that wrapped piece is going to stand out, maybe not be perfectly flat or square, and give away the fact that it's a separate piece. And so I like to try and get that as squared off as possible. Now here you see the weights I've applied. I've wrapped the ends and the top and the bottom of the container and I put weights on and I'm letting that dry for a few minutes. Now the next step is to glue the side, one side to the top and one side to the bottom. And this is where, this is really like building a regular model. You've got to get your square out, it's like putting together the sides of a structure. It's not quite as demanding as that, but nonetheless, you've got to line it up and try and get a 90 degree angle and make sure that the side of the container that you're gluing to the bottom or the top is aligned with the end of the container and also aligned with the edge all the way along the length of the container. So this is a little bit tricky and you need to make sure that the sides are oriented in the right direction. So just look at the side that you're about to glue and there's some lettering on there so you can tell where the top is. Well make sure that you orient the side correctly. Now, this picture shows the two halves that I've glued after they've been glued and dried and the ends are ready to be installed as well. Now the next shot, I've stacked, I've assembled the container essentially. I've taken these two L-shaped pieces and lined them up and glued their edges together to make a square, an open square. And here I put it together and I put weights on it to hold it together and I've let it dry. I think I let this dry overnight. I don't think that's necessary. Um, and afterwards I, then glue these ends to the container. Again, make sure they're oriented correctly. Each end is going to have a black tab folded onto the inside, and that black tab is the bottom of the container. So make sure that that's lined up with the bottom of the container. Now on the bottom of the container, you're going to see there's an area where the container will, um, mat will rest on the trailer and that is the end of the container that does not have a door. So you, that's the end that you put the, the plane in, the front, the quote unquote front of the container, doesn't have doors and that goes where there's a little rectangular area that would match up with the truck, and, uh, a trailer rather, that would match up with the trailer chassis and that's where you put that piece. So there you have it. That's how I assemble the team track paper container models. When these are done, they're pretty heavy because of the mat board and they're really solid. They really could hold a lot of weight there. Uh, so that's really to recommend them. Uh, and I really like the tech, the coloring, the texturing, the weathering that they've already built into their uh, texture sheets is very nice. And so you can see my video about the comparison of the Digcom uh, paper containers with the Team Track paper containers to see a little bit more about that. But these are not too hard to assemble. I think they're harder to assemble than the Digcom designs. But uh, anybody who can put together a model of a freight car or a structure model can easily put together one of these containers. Until next time, this is Bob Johnson with PKNW Railroad signing off. Keep on modeling.